<laughs> Can you guys see it? Give me a thumbs up. Show me your nails if you can see it. Let me see those beautiful things. Okay, all right, so we're gonna talk about branding and social media, and this is something I, sort of like a, a formula I stumbled on this year that I wish I had known like five years ago. <laughs> so hopefully it helps you guys a lot um, because it's helped me to figure out my personal brand and, um, and, and then use it in social media, all right? So, um, so we're gonna talk about branding first before we jump into social media. And so personal brand is um, what people say about you when you're not in the room. And it's basically your legacy. I really love calling your brand your legacy. It's kind of like what you want people to remember about you. And, and, the, and so I'll share a little story that, oh my gosh, why is there <laughs> just like drawings on that? Okay, that's weird. Um, are you guys seeing like the weird marker on there? Okay, all right, it's not just me. I'm not losing my marbles. Okay, um, so uh, I don't know if you guys, if you, I'm a huge fan of personal development and I listened to Jenna Kutcher's podcast called Gold Diggers and she had one on branding and she talked about um, one of their good friends who had actually passed away. And when she was trying to remember this friend and kind of like reminisce about the good times and just, um, just kind of look back on his life. She went to his social media. She went to his Facebook and his Instagram and just looked back on the person that he was and that legacy that he left behind. And so your, your personal brand is like your voice, your vision and your visuals. Um, and it takes time to kind of figure it out, but I'm going to give you some tips on how to figure it out. Um, but really I want you just to think about what legacy do I want to be like, leave behind like if you died in six months what do you want people to remember about you what do you want to be posting about that you know you want people to to think of when they think of you um and so for me and i i don't know raise your hand if you're a mom i have four kids i'm a mom okay we got lots of moms in here um I have four kids and my daughter i have a teenage daughter who is also on instagram and she watches me and so I have to think about what, um, you know, what, what message and what things do I want to, her to learn from my, or like remember from my posts. And so some of my posts are directed at her, honestly. <laughs> um, but I, you know, so for me, it's, I, I want my kids to remember that I took care of myself, that I didn't let myself go when I became a mom, because I have, that's happened to me in the past where I did let myself go. And I did put myself on the back burner and then I was not a happy human and, um, not, not a happy mom. And, um, and so I learned that's when I got super passionate about fashion. So that's another thing that I, you'll see me posting on social media is I love, I love clothes. Like I love clothes. <laughs> um, and so, um, and so I'll share about that and I'll share, so fitness and fashion and food. I'm a foodie guys. And I talk about pizza a lot. Um, <laughs> and then family is very important to me. You know, my little family and my extended family and even my team family. Um, and then faith in yourself. That's a big one. I really want to help women. Uh, I want to empower women to look good, feel good, do good. And that's, the, that's the line I use in my, in my Instagram and on my Facebook bio. So those are, that's kind of my message, the kind of the legacy that I want to leave behind on social media and to the people that follow me. And so I want you to start thinking about like, what message do you want to leave behind and, and start thinking about what are your five faves? Okay. That screw that thing is bugging me. <laughs> I don't know how I got that weird scribble and I hope it's not, let me see. Yeah. It's on everyone. Okay. Anyway, if anyone knows how to fix that, just, just type it up in the chat. <laughs> um, so here's how you're going to kind of discover your personal legacy. So, um, start thinking of what are your five faves? Um, can you guys hear me? Tiffany said she's having a hard time hearing everyone else. Good. All right, cool. I can turn up my volume a little too. Um, 
So what are your five faves? I want you to think about when it comes to branding, um, what could you talk about all the time? Like when you get together with your girlfriends, you probably end up talking about the similar things each time when you go to lunch or whatever. Like I just went to lunch with some girlfriends yesterday. We always talk about our kids. Like it's hard not to, right? Our kids are adorable or sometimes they're obnoxious and we have to talk about it. So, um, so maybe it's family for you. Um, maybe you're like obsessed with coffee or like Jackie, you know, we know she's into fitness. She used to be a beach body coach. I used to be a beach body coach. So that's kind of our thing. Um, so be thinking of different things that you could talk about all the time and that you naturally do talk about all the time and that you naturally do post about. And then you want to rotate those things. And this is the great thing about discovering your personal brand is that, um, I think one of the, one of my strengths is automating things. And I think it's because I have mom brain and I like to only think of things once and then, and come up with a plan and just repeat it. And so when you have your five faves, that's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, five different types of posts you can do. And then you rotate, right? Um, so anyway, so I kind of shared some of my fav five faves, my family, fitness, fashion, food, and faith in yourself. Um, and of course, like if it doesn't necessarily fit in that, I still, I mean, and I still share like other random things too, but those are kind of like the pillars of my brand. Um, other things that you want to, other brand branding that you want to think of is team branding. So, and maybe you're not there yet. Maybe you only have, uh, one person on your team. Maybe you don't have anyone on your team, but be you know, keeping this in mind that you want to brand your team. Um, and so think of like, what are your team colors? What is your team hashtag? I use my team hashtag all the time because it's branding people. They are like, okay, what is team nailed it? What are you talking about when you say team nailed it? I want people to know my team name that follow me. Um, do you have team swag? You know, giving that to your team, wearing it yourself. And does your team know about your team hashtag, your team colors, your team swag? So um, everyone knows my colors are pink, like, and that that's our team colors and things like that. So that's just another thing to, to think about when it comes to branding. All right, let's talk about social media, my favorite. It's because it's so fun, you guys. If you're not having fun, you're not doing it right, okay? So, um, so I want you guys to put the fun back in social media. Um, and find a way to make it fun. For me, I think one of the reasons is that I used to be a photographer for like 13 years. So it's a very creative outlet for me to like take pictures and edit them. Like I geek out on that and I love, love editing my pictures. Um, and usually they're just phone photos. So you don't have to do anything fancy and you don't necessarily even have to edit your photos. That's just something I, I like to do. Um, but make it fun. Maybe you like to write and you can just have fun, like writing your captions. Um, you know, just find your strength in social media and rock it. So, um, one thing I always tell my new stylists is that your social media is your, is like your reality show. Okay. So all of you have your own reality show. Okay. And that's social media. That's your personal wall. When I'm talking about this, I'm talking about your personal Facebook and your personal Instagram page. And sometimes your VIP group, you can do similar things in your VIP group, but I want to encourage you to do it on your personal wall and your Instagram, because that's how you attract new customers to join your VIP group and join your sneak peeks, um, and things like that. So it's your reality show sprinkled with commercials. Okay about color street, but you don't want to make it an infomercial. Okay. Um, I can't tell you how many stylists I see that have made it an infomercial or they're just sharing everyone else's crap and not their own lives. So, um, it would be like a social media show about someone else's social media show. Like, you know what I mean? They're sharing cat videos, they're sharing like all this other content and none of their own content. So what I want to train you guys to do is to, um, it's called attraction marketing and it's way more fun. It's way easier. And, um, and, and it, so I just want to encourage you to do that. 
because when you like think of your favorite reality show star, I mean like Joanna Gaines, like I love Joanna Gaines. Like she's such um, an icon and she's so admirable and so many people are obsessed with her. In fact, our team, I don't know if any of you guys follow me, but we just went on a retreat to Waco to Magnolia Market because I love her that much. So you're going to get people that start watching what you do and, um, and they're going to be intrigued by it, you know? And so, and some of you guys might think, well, I don't do anything that special, but you guys, all of us are curious and we want to know what other humans are doing, right? We want to know, I want to know what you ate for breakfast. I want to know what your hobbies are. I want to know what your kids are doing. I want to know if your kids are naughty. Uh, you know what I mean? It's just like simple things like that. It doesn't have to, you don't have to be doing mind blowing things to post on social media. Um, so here's some tips to share with you guys. Um, so yeah, sprinkled with commercials about the nails and about the business. Um, don't make an infomercial. Think of it kind of like a journal. Um, I, I do use my social media sort of as a photo journal and, um, and I've always enjoyed journaling. So, so to me, again, it's a legacy that I'm leaving behind. It's like my journal I'm leaving behind to my kids. And, um, you know, I even print little chat books from it and everything. Um, another tip is to get vulnerable. People don't want to know, they don't want to see that your life is totally perfect. And, um, so you have to share, like get raw, share the things that you're struggling with, share the, um, imperfections about your life because we all have them and everybody's like super sick of the, you know, the highlight reels that we see on social media. So, you know, share your feelings and things like that. And so like for me, like I said, I'm kind of a nerd when it comes to taking pictures and making them look pretty. That's because I was a photographer and that's like my aesthetic. I just really um, get into that. So sometimes I'll get more vulnerable in the wording. Um, or you guys can do the opposite. You can get vulnerable and be like, oh my gosh, check out this giant, like check out all the boxes in my background. Look how messy my office is. Like that's where people are like, okay, that's my girl. Like I, that girl who has a messy office, we can be friends. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, or that girl who yells at her kids, like, all right, like she's real, you know? So you have to be relatable. Um, and and just get vulnerable sometimes. Um, some other tips is to follow rock stars in other direct selling companies. So I follow a lot of beach body coaches. I follow people, um, rock stars. I, any, anytime I know someone's like Oilers, famous Oiler girls, like I follow them because they know what is up. They know what they're doing and I get ideas from them. Um, how not to be annoying. This is another thing that when I get on the phone with my new stylist, I say, what is your biggest fear? And so many of them say, I don't want to be annoying. I don't want to be that, that girl. I don't want us to be spammy. And here's what I say to them. First of all, if you're doing it like a, uh, a reality show, that's not annoying. Everybody loves reality TV, right? <laughs> and second of all, if you're adding value, you're not being annoying. So if you're adding value, maybe that means sharing a recipe. Um, maybe that means um, sharing like your thoughts on, you know, getting vul vulnerable. That's adding value because there's, they feel like I'm not alone. I'm not the only mom going through this. I'm not the only woman feeling this way. Um, and, and so just trying to find ways to add value, you know, sharing quotes, that's such an easy one to do. You guys, I share quotes all the time and people will be like, oh my gosh, I needed this today. And that's like sometimes the easiest post to do. <laughs> just go on Pinterest, save a post, a quote and put it on there. Um, use daily themes as prompts. So sometimes if you're like, okay, I have no idea what to post because like, I'm in my pajamas and you know, I'm, I'm just doing the same old, same old, right? So think of daily prompts like Manny Monday or tip Tuesday or, uh, what you cook on Wednesday or food Friday, social life Saturday, different things like that. 
um, can give you a prompt. So you might want to like write down, hey, I'm going to pick a prompt for each day of the week and that will give me an idea. Or like I said, use your five favorites and, and, you, and you do Monday, number one, favorite thing, Tuesday, number two, favorite thing. You know what I mean? Um, and then post on multiple platforms. So here's what I do. A lot of people think, oh, well, I just, I don't get Instagram. And I'm like, girl, if you're on, in, if you're on Facebook, you can be on Instagram and vice versa. I literally copy and paste the same content everywhere. So if you guys go to my Instagram, it's, um, at Kelly France, Kelly with an I, and you look, you'll see that the same, I just did a post right before this call. Um, there's a post on my Instagram that I posted on my Facebook that I posted on my business page. So there's like three different places. So I'm all about three birds with one stone. So you don't have to have different content for different platforms. You might hear that you, you need to, but I've been doing this successfully for years and you don't. <laughs> okay. And that's going to simplify your life too. Um, the other tip is, and this and I want you to pay very close attention because this could change your life, is that you don't have to post in real time, okay? So the picture that I posted right before this team call, I took two weeks ago, maybe three. So I'm constantly gathering photos of myself, of my family, of the, my five favorites, and I put them into an app. Um, I use Planoly, but there's another one called Snug. Um, anyway, I'll put them into Planoly. That's the one I'm recommending. It's free. Um, and I think I have a code. Let me give you guys a link after this call and, um, and you can check it out. But uh, Planoly is free and it's really pretty. You can move your photos around if you're a nerd on Instagram and you want them to look pretty. If not, it doesn't even matter. But I like that I can put them all in a pool and then I can also add wording to them and save the wording for later. So this is what I do every morning is I plan. So every Sunday, I don't get on social media on Sunday. I don't work on Sunday, but I do edit my photos because I love to edit my photos. And I do kind of rearrange them and decide, okay, this will probably be Monday's post. This will be Tuesday. This will be Wednesday. This, you know what I mean? Um, so I have my posts planned out until Friday. And the thing that is authentic is the wording. You know, maybe the picture was taken three weeks ago, but the wording is going to talk about my life today or my life this week. You know what I mean? So that has been so helpful for me because, you know, especially if like some of you guys are working um, during the day and things like that, it's so nice to just be like, oh, then like for me, my kids get home, when my kids get home from school, I'm done, I'm done working. And so I want to not have to be like, oh, wait, wait, hun, you need to wait a minute here while I'm doing my post. Da, da, da. You know, I want to just be like, oh, it's time to post, copy, paste, post. You know what I mean? So that's been really, really helpful. I used to, when I was a Beachbody coach, and I'm curious, Jackie, if this was the case for you, I feel like I had to post all the time in real time. And it kind of gave me anxiety, like, ah, I got to take a picture of my breakfast. Ah, I got it. You know what I mean? And it was like, um, it was just a lot of like pressure and you, I, I felt like I couldn't be in the moment. And that's really important to me. Like when I'm on vacation, I want to be in the moment and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, Jackie, were you going to say something? No. Okay. Um, so that helps so, so much to plan your posts, okay? And, and just get a pool of photos. Like if you're having a good hair day, change your outfit like 10 times and take a picture, okay? Um, like I always, I always get dressed up for my Try It Tuesday live videos and I'm like, oh, I'm gonna change my outfit. I'm gonna take some pictures. I'm gonna, you know, we're gonna make all the best of this because I do not look this way every day of the week. <laughs> um, so that's really helped and make sure that it is that you're posting pictures of you. That's another thing. When I get on the, my phone, on the phone with my new stylist, I'm like, okay, I'm going to stalk your Facebook right now. And generally there's hardly any pictures of the stylist. It's usually their kids. Or like I said, they're sharing other people's content 
um, or they don't post at all. And I'm like, girl, you're the star of your reality show. So you need to be in front of the camera, right? Like if you think of like Joanna Gaines, if, if you guys are fixer upper fans, if the show was only about the house, the houses and only showed her view of the houses and never showed her, we wouldn't be as into Joanna Gaines as we are, right? Um, let's see. Okay, sorry, I'm just looking at your comments. Okay. So those are some tips there. Let's talk about Instagram because I love Instagram. Instagram is the world's most powerful selling tool. That is by Forbes magazine. And I'm betting that half of you guys aren't even on there because I know there's lots of stylists that are not using it. There are 500 million daily users. Are you one of them? Um, so let me tell you about Instagram if you're not on there. This is Instagram simplified. It doesn't have to be complicated. If you can do Facebook, you can do Instagram. I already talked about the three birds with one stone. I always start, I always do my post on Instagram first, and then I copy and paste it to Facebook. I don't click share. There's an option to slide the and say share on Instagram. I don't do that because it doesn't get, the algorithm doesn't, um, like show your audience as well. So I will just post it organically on Facebook after I posted it on Instagram. Um, then sometimes I'll add hashtags. Sometimes I won't. It's okay. If you guys don't use hashtags, start sloppy. Okay. You're going to start. I want to challenge you. If you're not on Instagram, I double dare you to start one today. And and the other thing is not only can you start a personal Instagram, but start a nail one. If you can um, start a nail one, because the good thing about nail Instagrams is you can be an infomercial there. You can be annoying about your nails and your business there. So that's kind of fun to be like, oh, hey, here's my nails. Oh, hey, my business is amazing. You should join my, you know what I mean? Um, so that's definitely, you know, if you had to choose between I think it's important to do both, but if you had to choose, you might want to start a nail Instagram because that's a great place to connect with people who love nails. Um, oh my gosh, what is happening? I can't figure out why it's doing that. <laughs> These little like crayon marks. Okay. That's weird. Anyways. All right. So five ways to rock Instagram. Number one, use stories. I'm betting that if you're on Instagram, you watch people's stories because their stories is their behind the scenes, right? And everybody loves to know everybody else's like juice. We're all curious people, right? We want to know what you're cooking. We want to know again, and stories I think are more real and raw. And I think that's why people are drawn to them more. My stories get more views than my posts. And so, and I feel like I can be, you know, more just like, I, I'm just like a little more crazy, a little more, um, like less, what's the word? I don't know. I can't think of the word. <laughs> this is what happens when it gets, when it gets later in the day. Um, anyway, I just, it's more, uh, anyway, you know what I mean? So, so use stories and use them often. Um, and just share what you're doing. Like, oh, hey, my kid's being a goofball or my kid's crying. Hey, I'm going to video this. You know, this is funny. Um, or if you're doing something that you're like, hey, like, I, I bet people would enjoy knowing what food I'm eating or what I'm making for dinner. Just it's the little things. And that's how people get to know you better. Think of it as um, how many of you guys use Marco Polo? Raise your hand. The Marco Polo app. Okay. Think of your stories as like a Marco Polo that you're just sending to a girlfriend where you're just like, oh, hey, I haven't even showered today, blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? So if you think about it that way, it kind of makes it feel more personable. Um, so in 2017, stories became more popular than Snapchat. So you don't have to worry about Snapchat because nobody's on there. <laughs> I mean, there's probably people, but um what else? Use stories to share the opportunity. You can talk about your business blessings there. Um, and I do that all the time. Or just like post about your business here and there. 
Um, other ways to rock Instagram is using hashtags. So like I said, posting 30 hashtag in the comments, that's what I'll do sometimes. Sometimes I'll just type up maybe 10 really quick. Um, but sometimes I will, so I have notes on my phone that have hashtags that I like to use and I'll copy and paste them and put them in the comment. So like I, like I said, I love pizza. And so I have um, 30 hashtags about pizza. And so whenever I do a post about pizza, then I'll copy paste that note in the comments, in one of the comments. And then more people can see if people are searching hashtags, which I've searched hashtags. Um, and I've had people join my team from hashtags. So it is important to use them, but don't let that stop you. I think sometimes we're like, well, I don't, I don't use hashtags, so I'm just not going to do Instagram. Like, don't be a perfectionist procrastinator. Just start sloppy. And then if you have time, throw in a hashtag here and there. <laughs> um, all right. My previous upline found her, her person through hashtags. So like I said, people find their uplines through hashtags. So let's talk about the third way to, to rock Instagram, and that is using Linktree. Um, Linktree is, so on Instagram, you're only allowed one link in your bio. But with Linktree, you can create several links. So I, and it's free. That's the great thing about Linktree. Um, basically, it's like a splash page for all the stuff that you offer. So I have one that says, get a free nail stamp shop nail sets, become a VIP, different things like that. Um, and it's changed. This one's a little older, but, um, but yeah, it's nice to have one place with all your links. Okay. Number four is use direct messaging, which is D called DMs. More than 375 million people now use Instagram DMs each month. That's almost half of the users. So DMs is a great way to connect. I um, DM people every single day. And even my in people that follow me, I'll message them and say, hey, thanks so much um, for following. Let's see. Let me tell you my, I'll tell you what I say. I have a script because I'm a nerd. <laughs> thanks for the follow. Do you mind if I ask if there was something in particular that you liked that you wanted to follow? Just trying to keep, just trying to do more of that to help peeps enjoy my feed. So I, I like that I, it's kind of a question because then I get feedback from people saying why they followed me. And, um, and it's been really interesting to see because obviously you want to do market research and they'll say, oh, it's because I really like your photos. So that means I should be doing more of that, you know, or they'll say, oh, I like the, your, your positive vibe, your like one lady said, I love that your photos, you just always look happy in your photos. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to make sure that I'm smiling in most of my photos. So things like that. Um, anyway, that's been helpful to kind of do a little bit of market research when they, when they follow me. Um, and then you can also comment on other people's stories to connect with them. So, you know, st stories are like those little circles at the very top of Instagram. You just click on them and watch them. And if you see something that you're like, oh my gosh, like I have that same dog too. You can comment and start a conversation and build relationships with people. And then number five is to make your feed pretty. And I put this last because I don't think that it's entirely necessary on Instagram, but it is a bonus if you can. Okay. I've seen people rock Instagram who have craptastic photos. So don't feel like that's like you have to have like amazing photos or like this perfectly pretty feed. That's not the case. Like some people just are really good at sharing their lifestyle and, um, and people don't care what their photos look like, but you can use snug or planally, like I said, to arrange your photos. And then I think it's good to edit your photos and like brighten them up. Um, you can, I like to use the pick tap go. Um, that's a really simple app to use, um, or visco, or even sometimes I'll just use the, the editing app in Instagram. So, um, that, yeah, those are my biggest tips on Instagram. And then finally, it's my last tip 
um, is to beat the Facebook algorithms. It, algorithms. Let's talk about Facebook really quick. Um, <clears throat> on Facebook, you really don't need to do more than three posts a day. In fact, if you do, it, it is not, it's not as good. Like Facebook, they just changed their algorithm and this is kind of the new, or not just, but like earlier in the year. And these are kind of the new, like how to beat the algorithm. Um, you want to leave about three hours in between posts. So, um, you know, I like to, when you're trying to create a new habit, attach it to a current habit. So I'm guessing you all eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Well, that's a good time to post as well. So when you're eating breakfast, that's your trigger. Oh, I need to post on social media. When you're eating lunch, oh crap, I need to post on social media. When you're eating dinner, and that way you're also hitting the breakfast, um, like the morning people, the, the lunch hour people, and the evening people. Um, and then comment and interact five minutes before posting to warm up the algorithm, especially before going live. I don't always do this, but it is good to know. <laughs> Um, and then go live. If you guys, I want to challenge you guys to go live more. It's scary. Do not get, I, I totally know it's scary. Um, but the more you do it, the easier it gets. So for me, and I, I don't love it. I'm not going to lie. I don't love going live because, you know, it's, you're putting yourself out there. You're vulnerable. Like, ah, what if you mess up? What if your kid runs across naked or your husband? Like, who knows, right? <laughs> but um, but you, um, I want to encourage you to go live at least once a week. And pick maybe a theme or a series. So I do Try It Tuesday, where I go and I try a product in front of everyone. And that's been really fun for me. Um, and it's a trigger. It says, oh, crap, it's Tuesday, and I need to go live. So. Um, just things like that, those kind of triggers help me to be consistent with posting and with going live. Or if I just am like, oh, I bet my audience was, would love to see this, I'll go live. So, um, and keep in mind, you guys, you don't have to go live and talk for 15 minutes. Like, you can go live for 60 seconds if you want. So, um, it doesn't have to be long, it doesn't have to be anything mind blowing. And then ask questions. That's a big one on, on, on Facebook and Instagram. Ask questions because you want to make it interactive. You want to make it social. That's what social media is all about, right? So those are kind of my tips there, Jackie. I'm sorry, there's only three minutes left. <laughs> no, yeah. no, we want to hear from you, not me. So <laughs> that was incredible. Oh my gosh, so much information. I mean, I think I was like writing like a mad woman. Um, I so appreciate it. And then we only have like three minutes. I did want to ask just like one question because we see you are like the top recruiter, top in team promotions. How do you, do you feel like you get most of your stylist from your actual personal social media page? Are you getting them from your VIP page that have people who have already tried the product or are they people from like a party you hosted? Do you, do you have like where they come most from? Yeah, so I actually did, I have like a Facebook group just for my um, enrollees and um, I asked them, I did like a poll and they said, where did you find me? The majority of them found me on YouTube. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. So they found me on YouTube because they're looking for someone that's going to train their team mm -hmm. or that, that's going to train them. So hit your butts on YouTube. <laughs> and then the second found me on Facebook or followed me on Facebook or whatever. And then the third Instagram and then the fourth, um, in person. Isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. It's really, it's all about social media and that's why I love it so much. It's like, I hardly have anyone local on my team. It's all, all over the U S and that's, that's what's so fun. We get to meet friends from all over the U S. So yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you so so much. I mean, we have been talking about this for weeks. So I'm so <laughs> it happened. Um, really for taking your time. Um, You're welcome. Thanks. I I was so excited to talk to you guys. Okay. Well, thank you. We hope your move is good and easy, and we hope to chat soon. Thanks. Bye, guys. Bye. Good luck. <laughs>